Hi and welcome. What you're looking at is the chuck that came with my lathe. It's made in Taiwan and the quality is fairly decent. The surfaces are all ground, it's well balanced, the action's really smooth, there's not a lot of play in the jaws. In actuality there's not a lot negative to say about this chuck except it's missing one really useful feature. And when I got the opportunity to get a new chuck that was made in Poland, uh, I took advantage of it. I got a really good deal on eBay. Someone was just dumping it. Happened to be exactly the right size for my leg. So this is the four jaw chuck and you can see that they're quite similar in a lot of ways. One of the uh, improvements though, and very notable, are these T-slots put into the side of the chuck. And uh, among other things, you can use them to hold parts down and you could even use this as a uh, fa uh, face plate. But that's not why I'm really interested in them. Um, when you're trying to clamp a part in that you want to set in the edge of the chuck, on a three-jaw chuck I have these guys here which are magnetic. And so you can set the part there and hold it so that it's parallel on all sides to this face of the chuck. Um, with a four-jaw I don't have any of these. And I saw a solution that Tom Lipton uh, made for his chuck that I'm going to imitate. And basically, in these T-slots, you can fit a part that will slide out here that has a threaded bolt that you can adjust for height. And you can easily set that with an indicator to make them all match. It's very handy, even more handy than these guys, because these guys are a fixed height. Uh, the one I'm proposing to make I can set for any arbitrary height, which is pretty handy. So I'm going to make one of those because the next project I'm working on, I've got to turn some fairly small diameter, di uh, small thickness, large diameter discs. And in order to do that, I want them to be parallel to the face of the jaw uh, of the chuck at all times. So this is going to be a handy tool that I need. And this chuck has that feature. It was something I absolutely was looking for when I went to buy this chuck. So let's get started. So while I still have a three-jaw chuck uh, installed, I need to make an arbor so that I can turn and face these half-inch 20 bolts. Um, I'll be, once I tap this, I'll be able to thread these in, and, and my turning process will tend to want to tighten them, so I'll be able to face these pretty easily. So I just need to drill and tap this guy for half-inch 20, and then I'll be able to face these guys. I chose half-inch 20 instead of half-inch 13 because it gives me finer adjustment control. So these are grade 8 bolts and I've just threaded one into the arbor here and uh, we're just going to take off enough to flatten them out. So let's go in and uh, touch off. I was worried these were going to be a bit hard. So I just need to do a bunch more of these. So let me finish those and I'll bring you back. Make sure there's no pip in the center. That's nice, got a nice flat bearing surface now. So here are my four sets of height adjust bolts, all finished. And uh, the one on the end here was the, I tried a different insert on this one. I tried a positive rake insert normally used for aluminum. Did get a better finish out of this material, whatever it ends up being. Um, now we're off to the mill to make T-slot uh, nuts and the tool itself that will hold these various bolts. So I'm working on the T-slot uh, holders, the, the nut for it, and I screwed up the stock at one end which you can see down here, right here. When I was cutting, when I was dimensioning the stock I screwed up and uh, was looking at ten thousandths and thinking they were thousandths, so I was off by a fair amount. But I'm going to try and uh, hog out all this material at one time using a uh, uh, high-speed steel cobalt uh, roughing mill and we'll just see how it goes. It's uh, 400 thousandths depth and about 200 thousandths width so we'll go slowly. We'll see how it set up to do the other side and uh, 
we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take it all in one bite because it went very smoothly. And uh, finish this guy off. Although I'm going to have to dimension one more piece of stock to get this right. I'm going to pop this stock out now and uh, deburr it and then give it a test fit in the T-slot see how close we are. Then I need to cut this into multiple pieces. And I was just thinking, I originally was going to make these things square. This is about 0.9 wide um, by 0.9 long, but I really don't need to for what I'm going to do with this. So I might make them like 3 quarters long and uh, get 4 out of the stock that's not damaged. I think that should be alright. So let me deburr this and test it and see what happens. So here's the piece finished. Now uh, all we have to do is cut the pieces out, drill and tap for quarter 20. And uh, I did an extra pass with the carbide cutter back there, uh, which is a non-roughing end mill, because the edges of this, you guys, you can see even after I did a light pass, um, has grooves in it and uh, they were interfering with the fit. I also got the roughing end mill type wrong. I said that this was a coarse, it's actually a fine. Here's a coarse. And this is a hybrid, so you'll notice that on this guy, one flute, every other flute is uh, a roughing style followed by a wiper or normal end mill style so that uh, you get a really great finish but your feeds can be higher. So there's the three types. And my impression was always that, uh, on a, even on a, on a roughing end mill, that when you've got a, you know, a peak on this one, that would line up with the valley on the next flute, but uh, and maybe they do, but maybe my feed was still a little too fast and my RPMs weren't high enough. I'm not quite sure, but the end result is I still ended up with grooves. So anyways, now we just got to part these four bits off and uh, drill and tap for quarter 20 as I mentioned, and we'll be good with the T-nuts. So right now we've got the four T-nut uh, T-slot nuts uh, finished, and I lucked out that I had enough material to actually make them all the size because uh, I made it extra large just in case when I was planning it anyways. So now all we have to do is center drill, drill, countersink, and uh, tap. So now we'll start with the center drill. Having a vice stop is a big help when you're doing sort of production style work. Next up, I need to dimension this piece of stock, and it's a lot wider than my vices. So the traditional method is if you had two vices, you clamp it in both. And on another project, I made this height extension block that works with this uh, grinding vise so that it'd be multi-purpose. And it sets these jaws, the bottom of these jaws, at exactly the same height as the curt, so I can cross clamp these pieces together. So I'll set this up so you can see what I mean. So I haven't clamped this guy down yet. One problem, uh, with this is that these vice jaws are a lot taller than these vice jaws. So these guys are a little, just barely over an inch, and these are an inch and three quarters. So although I got the base of these vice uh, um, uh, vices matched so that the part lines up perfectly, you can see that if I uh, take a flat over here, that if I have to have something clamped towards the top of these jaws, it's not going to work. So in this case, it will work for doing both the long sides, but when I have to do the flat, I'm going to have to come up with a different solution. This bar is eventually going to get it cut up into four pieces that will be my four uh, uh, spacer block uh, um, bases, but uh, unfortunately, I am, uh, I'm not going to be able to clamp it 
is one piece uh, for the flat, the, the shallow side. So, and we'll have to come up with a different solution for that. So we've got a bunch of pieces of dimension stock. Um, they don't have the little tab cut out. That's going to be the last step. So next, we're going to go and turn these guys on their side. Drill a body hole for the 1024 screw on one side. Tap screw. Well, tap size going all the way through, body size for the top half with room for the head. So we're going to be doing a lot of drilling. And uh, these parts aren't very wide, so what I've done is I've used my micro, I don't know what you call them, very thin parallels. And I use a spring between them to hold them pressed against the outer, uh, the outer jaws. And that prevents them from moving around. So I want to make sure that's firmly pressed up there. And now I will find my two zero points because on the drawing distances are measured off of the top right. So I'm going to make a risky move here. If you really want to be careful and make sure that every hole is perfectly concentric and lined up right, I would center drill, drill, tap, counter bore, all in one operation, and then switch to the next piece. But what I'm going to try and do is see if I can do this manufacturing style at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start and center drill each one of these guys. Then I am going to drill with my tap drill all the way through. Then I am going to countersink for the top portion of it. And then I'm going to come back and tap each one. And if, every, if I do everything right and this stop is good and everything else is set right, I should be able to go through all these steps without any hitches. So let's give it a shot and see what happens. So next up, I got to take this guy down about 0.475. Oh, 
nicely done. Exactly what I was warning myself about. Those thin parallels are really risky. Now we're going to go countersink 190 thousandths. Last stop, tapping. a spiral point tap which pushes all the chips through to the bottom because it's a through hole. Let's just do a quick sanity test and uh, threads are kind of tight. I might need to chase them or there still could be chips in there. Let me blow that out. So my apologies. I was doing 1032 not 1024 and my test screw was a 1024. My bad. So uh, we're gonna go back. We just wanted to pause and make do a sanity check real quick. So got four more to do, three more to do rather. Tap drill for the half inch 20 threads. Big bites there. <clears throat> okay, so we're gonna slow this guy all the way down. 60 RPM. Often like to speed it up on the way back. That lets me uh, clean the threads out.
So next up, got to turn these guys on their sides like so, and I need to slip them all the way down to this relief here. It's uh, about an inch and a half. So that'll be up next. one down a whole bunch to go and pop this out of here and uh, clean off a little bit so you can see it there we go I can see it already separated there's a little bit of tension in the metal and it's pulled apart it's kind of interesting so uh, Anyways, got a couple more to do, deeper to one side. Next up, we're going to machine the tab and uh, we're going to uh, try and take an eighth inch material. This is a uh, roughing finisher, so let's see how it works. assembly line this and since I have to set the specific width for each one I think I'm actually going to come back and do uh, all four the same way. So I've been roughing out my tab and this is the tab. I'm leaving this much material there so the rest can be removed but before I could get to this I have to actually clamp a piece of brass. I'm concerned this stuff will be a little too floppy while I'm trying to remove material. So I'm putting the screw in and clamping it down, and uh, now I can remove the rest of the material at will. So I'll do it in two passes, and uh, just go slow and uh, easy. This style of T-nut already made. I wanted to make some round T-nuts that would fit into the pocket on the end. They get closer to the middle. So we're going to give that a shot. This is 4140. And uh, so they won't be as strong. So instead of cold rolled like this, I'll use 4140 and hopefully that'll make up for it. So we're going to take a pretty big bite. We're going to do a 50,000 step to cut, 14,000 to revolution. So I have the stock drilled and tapped with a quarter twenty and now I've got to reduce this dimension to the small dimension of the slot leaving the back part uh, the outer dimension which it all is right now that's the slot width so I'm just going to make a bunch of uh, round T style nuts and I've got a way to prevent them from spinning in the slot and I'll do that in the mill. I'm just basically going to put a little pin sticking out. So now we are drilled, tapped, profiled. Now I just need to part it off at the proper depth. So the round T-slot nuts uh, would spin in place potentially uh, when you're trying to tighten things down. Uh, I made them fit fairly closely edge to edge. They slide smoothly, but there's only, you know, maybe 10 thousandths play. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill and uh, insert these brass bushings that are going to stick out about an eighth of an inch, and they'll prevent this thing from rotating in the T-slot. That'll let me tighten things up. I don't have a great work holding situation here. Um, I should have left, that, left some extra material if I was going to plan ahead for this, but since I didn't, I've got the vise cranked down really hard and I'm uh, walking up sizes 
into what's finally going to be a quarter inch end mill so I can get a flat bottom. So to give you a general idea of what they're going to do is these round guys can now fit in here but they can't rotate so you'll be able to untighten them. But they do fit all the way into the slot in the corner which will allow me to get closer into the middle with my uh, height adjusters. So that gives me an advantage because the square one stopped soon early. So this project kind of got out of hand because my ideas about the design changed as I went. Not unusual for me. <laughs> Started with regular T-nuts and these shorter uh, height adjusting bars. Ended up with round T-nuts and these long reaching uh, height adjusters. And uh, the tension on these guys is set by a, a nylon set screw here that uh, goes in the end and uh, you can tighten that guy down to uh, set tension on the thread. It's hard to do this one-handed, sorry about that. Um, so anyways, um, I also started with these regular uh, grade A bolts and then thought, you know, Tom Lipton was uh, at the Bar Z Bash uh, here, was uh, demonstrating lapping on these flathead, flathead bolts and I thought, oh, they're even more perfect than these guys because these I got to get a wrench to the side to adjust. These guys I can take an Allen wrench straight on. So anyways, here's all the parts. I ended up making a bunch of different sizes of these guys so that I could handle all the various parts. Also, I don't know if it would ruin the stiffness or not, but I could put a second uh, one half 20 and exclude the need for this one altogether. It might make the rear of this too weak. This is 4140 stock though. I thought I'd use uh, different stock for that one, especially since I was out of the cold world. <laughs> let's be honest. Anyways, so let's go over to the lathe and pop these in the chuck. Uh, let's try the new ones and see how they uh, work. So we got the chuck here. I've pulled the safety screws out of the T-slot. And I will take my locking nuts, my round locking nuts, with the uh, brass aiming out. And once they're in, I will reinsert the safety screws. And uh, the job of the safety screws is, if something's loose, to prevent it from flying out, like that. Um, next up, take one of these guys, mate the little uh, tab in with the slot. Oop, different uh, Allen. and lock it in place. I'll set up the rest, bring you back. So the range of these guys is from here to here. It's not a lot. If I took the uh, safety screws out, I could come out a little bit more and still be fine. But I also have the short ones. Let me bring one over and show you what that looks like. So for somewhat larger diameter parts, I can support them farther out to prevent teetering, although I don't think that's gonna be a problem. I think these four inner supports will be perfect. And the advantage of having uh, the supports being able to go in even farther is if I have smaller pieces, uh, I can still support those as well. So I've pretty much got it covered here with everything I might want to turn on this, even if I flip the jaws around, which uh, I will for larger parts. Uh, let's uh, see how you set these up next. So here's the uh, slightly more tricky part, uh, not a whole lot. So I pick one that I want to be my reference. I set my zero based on that. I rotate to the next one and adjust its height. And of course, right now these are just finger tight because I haven't put the, uh, the tightening screws on. So you go from one to the next. So right now there's no tension on these screws and actually I think that one's off by a full tenth, right? Let's see, that's three and that is two, right? So we need to go this way. There we go. And they do need a little bit of tension on that uh, nylon set screw. That's better. Again, I didn't tighten any of these, which I needed to, but just for demonstration purposes. Jeez Louise, that really does need some tightening. Okay, 
come back to my reference. There we are. So now all four of these are exactly the same height. So, next step would be to pop my work in place. And the height that I've got this currently set at, I just chose one at random, obviously is not grabbing very much on the part. So I wouldn't actually want to turn something like this, but you're getting the idea. And then I would indicate in the side as usual for centering, and I could face this at will. I could do fairly thin stock. Right now I'm biting about uh, 3 16 to a quarter of an inch of material, which means I could, uh, I could essentially face a fairly thin part. Um, but now you see the reason why I made multiple size screws, because if your part was much thicker, it'd need to sit down, you'd want it to sit down farther in to the jaws. So, anyways, that's my take on Tom Lipton's height adjusters for four-jaw chuck. I know this requires having T-slots, so if you don't have them, I apologize. This won't be as useful for you. Um, I've seen other people actually drill and tap the, their chuck so that they can mount something like this in place uh, to do the same job. Maybe that would be a, an approach for you, provided you don't damage the integrity of the chuck. Anyways, hope you found it useful. Hope you found it interesting. Hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.